Greetings everyone and welcome to the 20th podcast of Soulful Thoughts from Ireland. We are all dying from some form of death at this time, collectively and personally. And for me, this is one of the most sacred times of the year. Today, Sawain, the feast of death and dying. Today, I buried a lamb. I found the lifeless little body rolling back and forth at the very edge of the shore of the sea. It was an incongruous sight, seeing this creature of the land finding its death place in the element of ocean water. The body continued rolling back and forth as the waves gently lapped. How did it get here? And where did it come from? The sheep are kept way further back up in the fields. Looking at it more intently, it looked as though it had one or two broken legs. Perhaps it had escaped and fallen off the cliff. This did not seem likely, as these little white beings of freshly born bliss did not stray far from their mamas, and their mamas did not let them stray far from them. Perhaps it was the pet lamb of the American Irish, as they are called here, their Malibu-looking house, standing as a glass memorial to their former life was back a short way from the cliff. Continuing to look at this poor little earth lamb body, it just didn't feel right that it would have its resting place in the sea. And so I determined it best to bury it on the land. Going over the rise behind the sea, there were scattered here and there old boat pieces that had been washed ashore over the years during the storms. They were of a very hard plastic, and I deemed one of them to make a good shovel. Scooping the lamb up, it became immediately clear how heavy a waterlogged woolen lamb is. With stooped body and strained arms, I walked up the beach and over the rise to the designated burial place. It was a threshold grave. The beach continued over this rise, therefore the sand made an easy hole to dig. Yet it was right by the field that gave way into bog. I gently lowered the body into its new home, praying for the new life of this lamb to continue in another form. In the Celtic death law, it is considered a curse to return to this life in the same form. They do not, as in Eastern and traditional Christian traditions, consider animals or birds or any creature to be inferior to the human form. It is, in fact, a blessing to be born in another form, thereby your soul experiences and learns of the wisdom of every creature on this earth. Talazin, the Welsh bard and magical teacher and father of Merlin, had been awakened to the fullness of this cosmic wisdom through a very intriguing initiation with Caradwin, the great earth mother and goddess. She brought about his death and rebirth three times. And through that venture, he took on many forms, coming to know the wisdom of each creature he embodied. Talazin stretches our Western minds and bends them into a loop. He sings about what it is like to live as material objects, alive, 
with the fullness of life and consciousness. His sacred words speak. I was in many shapes before I was released. I was a slender, enchanted sword. I was raindrops in the air. I was the beam of a star. I was a letter in words. I was a book in origin. I was a lantern of light for a year and a half. I was a bridge that stretched over sixty estuaries. I was a path. I was an eagle. I was a coracle in the seas. Now we may dismiss his words as fantasy, but I say wait, do not dismiss this ancient wisdom so easily. What it tells us is the Celtic understanding of the continuation of life and death and their magical craftsmanship in creating material objects with a life force through their intentional creative thought and skill. There is no dualism here, saying this is sacred, but this is not. This form I am in changes into another form, all giving wisdom for the onward journey. Just stop for a moment and feel into what it would be like if we lived that way. Knowing that every animate and inanimate creation is flowing with the force of life. And now feel into this. Life moves into death, which moves into life. The one real eternal life throughout the journey. And here I must add, that I happened across a stone circle just down the road in a field. At first glance, it looks like a small group of stones together, not actually making a circle. But one day, deciding to say hello to them, I realized that this had been a circle. Though now some stones had fallen and were leaning inwards. I was praying and being with one of the upright stones with my eyes closed. And then upon opening my eyes, right there behind me was a man in spirit form. He was, if you can imagine, standing in the stone. Or we could say he was using the stone to transport himself to this dimension. Looking at his clothing, I knew he was a craftsman from another era. And he conveyed to me that he is deeply saddened that the old ways of creating sacred objects has been lost. That the magical way is gone. I could only stand in the sadness with him. Back to the grave of the Lamb. With my prayer complete and a cross of driftwood 
pressed into the covering sand. I ventured up to my dear neighbour farmer to see if he was missing a lamb. He was surprised to hear of where I found this little one and said he was not missing any that he knew. We both pondered where on earth this little lamb could have come from. He smiled as I told him about the burial and jokingly asked if I placed a cross on it. When I told him I had, he looked pleased. After a week or so, I visited the grave to see if the body was still in place. Of course it was not. Some other animal had clearly found it. The skin and bones were still intact, but literally the whole of the inner body was gone. It felt right that another be gifted life in this way. So now I reburied the skin and the bones with its broken legs and hooves. Another two weeks gone by and again I revisited and once more there was an empty hollow where the curly white body had lain. Scattered close by were small remnants of the bones and skeleton. A little further afield I found the lower half of the skin and legs. This time I left it there. No more hiding the body underground. It was time for the elements to openly take what was left. We have hidden from death for far too long. Yet death never hides from us. So many places she shows her face. Every loss a death, every parting a death. As Saint Teresa of Avila says, I die because I do not die. She is speaking about the small deaths every day we experience and in fact in every moment. Every exile is a death. The old breath moving across the waters making way for the new breath to arise. We are all dying now, collectively and personally. May we find the real, eternal life in it all. I did, some months later, meet the boy of the American-Irish family. Appropriately, I met him down at the beach in the exact spot where I first found the dead lamb lapping at the shoreline. I asked him about his pet lamb. He told me it had gone missing quite some months earlier. I told him of the burial. He looked down. And then rising to meet my eyes, he thanked me. May we all rise with the same gratitude when we die today and every day. This Sawain, the feast of the dead and dying, I will be undertaking a special ritual to open the portals for souls to be released, as I do every year. Only this year I will be doing this in our class living into the unknown. What better forum to do this in? So my prayer is that you and your loved ones be released into the real eternal life. Whichever side of the veil you are on. 
and an invitation. The first Saturday of every month, beginning November 7th, at 11 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern, I am offering Trusting in Love, the Mary Magdalene Support Group. Magdalene is with us, knowing we are in need of great support at this time. We will pray, chant, meditate, and join together in supportive strength and tenderness. Please see my website for more details. And may you live and die well. Slant.